What is up dudes, Damod's here today, and we're on the 2.4 Season 5 PTR, and I'll be showing you guys my favorite new build slash set uh, of this patch so far, and it happens to be the quickest Tormenek speed farming build. Um, and it all revolves around this new set, which I deem the anti-set set. So it's called uh, Legacy of Nightmares, and basically as long as these two rings, uh, your Litany of the Undaunted, and your Wailing Coast are the only set bonuses you have, you get this multiplier for every ancient item you have equipped. Currently the multiplier, so like every single ancient item you have in your gear slot, gives you an 800% damage multiplier and like reduces your damage taken by 4%. That and the next iteration of the patch can be bumped down to 100%, but it's still gonna be the quickest Tormenex Steed front build regardless. And I guess like what they're saying on the forums, it's gonna equate to like a 14, uh, 14 greater tier drop, but like right now we're doing like greater with 100. So it's still gonna be insanely quick. Um, so anyways, um, my favorite thing about Legacy of Nightmares is it doesn't have hard synergies with other set items. Like normally you have like six sets um, and then you have like complementary bracers and a belt and boots and an amulet. You don't really have much freedom with, the, with like choosing what you're going to be wearing. So nice thing I like about this is if your mind can conjure a build, you can make it happen in the game. And that's the funniest thing about it. And with that being said, let me introduce you guys to the new fastest Torment X Sweet Farming build. The first one going off like Paragon points. Basically, you just want to like max out your Paragon points uh, for like your movement speed, right? You want to have like 25% max uh, on your like character sheet. And mine goes up 35 because I have fleet footed. It stacks like above max. Uh, then you just like have max spirit, and then you just like as much dexterity as possible. Boom, just slam it in there. Uh, then our offensive, you just want crit chance, crit damage, uh, cooldown reduction, then attack speed. And then for your defensive stats, uh, the resist all, the armor, light percent, then life regen. And then for your utility stats, RCR first, because like you're gonna be seeing like wave of lights like crazy. So RCR is like a very, very strong stat. Uh, it's actually like probably stronger than CDR after a certain threshold of where you have like 100% uptime on your blinding flash. Um, and then you have area damage, and then uh, your life on hit, then gold fine. And gold fine is actually gonna be useful stat via the other synergies that we use with a couple legendary gems and uh like gold wrap people are like invited me to groups they're so nice i couldn't find a group because the, the queue is like 36 minutes on ptr and uh someone was nice enough to like lend me their game uh momentarily to make this video so um <laughs> now getting done with that let's go over uh the skills itself um so for your skills you want wave of light with explosive light this is a fire based build and you're going to be using like a lot of rcr properties so your wave light you want that to be fire the explosive light, um, then dashing strike for utility, uh, just move as quick as possible, uh, and then you want to use the movement speed boost. Uh, for your epiphany insight, um, you don't really need desert shroud, um, and I'll get into that later on, so you just want as much spear regen as possible, so epiphany with insight, uh, mystic ally, air ally, um, so if you have like any sorts of spear problems, you're going to be using this, um, if you don't, and then like when your spear dips low, you'll just see the on active effect, and it'll like give you 200 free spirit. Um, but if you don't want, if you don't have spear problems, then you just use Fire Ally for like the 100% or the 10% damage boost per ally. And then for this, Blinding Flash, uh, Faith of Light, just a uh, damage boost like when you press it. And then for your Mantra, um, using Mantra of Conviction, 20% uh, more damage, right? Well, passively it's 10, but then use the on active effect for it's 20. And the biggest thing is whenever you kill stuff, you get a 30% movement speed boost. And whenever you're like speed farming, you just want to be as efficient as possible. Now going into uh, like your passives, you want Beacon Etar, um, just because CDR based spec, that is pretty much, you don't want to change that out at all. Fleet footed, Morbid Speed is the better. Um, and then I prefer STI, uh, just so you cast Wave Lights quicker. If you have any sorts of spirit problems, go with Exalted Soul. If you just want to do more damage, you go with Momentum. And then last but not least is Harmony. So like monk, most monks, this is like your big defensive skill. But because of Boon of the Hoarder and our gold wrap, you don't really need this. So if you are comfortable with it, drop Harmony um, to either like Exalted Soul or Momentum, and then just keep STI on there, right? If you want to do more damage, uh, do that. If you just want more Spirit Gen, do that. But I'm just going to keep Harmony on for the basis of the video. So now going into like the bread of the butter of the items. Um, what items do you need? What items are required? Since this build, you don't really use sets besides your Wailing Host and your Litany, you pretty much have the freedom to do whatever you want, but 
We do, uh, we're still utilizing some synergies with some of the, like the unique affixes with their build. So <clears throat> biggest thing that you want is an in-gem. Uh, so every single time you like kill an elite, uh, your skill cooldowns are reduced by like it rolled eight to 10 seconds. Uh, for 15 seconds that you kill elite pack, what that allows you to do is dash infinitely, basically allows you to have like 100% of times on your blinding flash, allows you to like spam your mystic ally, allows you to have your epiphany always up so you don't get spirit starved. And then this is a new item in the game, and this is kind of required. Kyoshiro's Blade. Um, brand new fist. Uh, so what it does, basically just increases your wave light damage by 150%. Um, when the initial impact of your wave light hits three of your enemies, the damage bonus is increased from 200 to 250. So you want like the high end of the spectrum there. Um, that's like kind of required. And then for your bracers, Pinto's Pride, brand new. Um, Wave Light slows enemies at 80% for three seconds and deals 129% increased damage. Nice thing about this is the slow procs are being the trap. So that's like what's procking and being the trap be that range because for your helmet slot, you'll be using this Tazu Karan's Gaze. Uh, I got like reworked a little bit and noticed like this has been the game forever. But the Wave Light Multiplier has been increased drastically. It now rolls 125 to 150. I think before it was like 20 to 25 or was it? Yeah, I think it was 20 to 25. Um, so that's like totally redone. Now for the rest of the items, basically Kruda's Boots uh, doubles your Mystic Ally. Um, you just, and then you just want to get like your Dex, your Vit, your movement speed on there, your stacking resist. Same stat priority as normal, stacking resist and Dex Vit. Uh, for your Pants, your Pox Pauls. Uh, I'm using Pox Pauls right now is because uh, like when, when they fart, right, that little number on your screen, like the 469, a multiplier is modified by this. It's actually really cool. Um, like, it, like it basically modifies everything. So like, for example, like let's turn on like firewalkers. Like any, like any items that have like a unique affixes that based off percent weapon damage that modifies it. Like I could like go and like torment 10, right? I could put an equip firewalker. Then firewalker itself could literally could just farm the mobs for me, right? The white mobs. That's how insane it is. And then, um, for your shoulders, you'll be using uh, Death Mantle's Death Watch Mantle. I like this because another on proc effect. So you just have like all these on proc effects just like going off um, between your fart pants and your shoulders. And then we'll just change that back to the Nemesis Bracers. Wow. Where's the Nemesis Bracers at? Okay, so anyways, those are those items. And then for your gloves, you just want like mage fists, uh, fire damage. Uh, then you just want dex, crit chance, crit damage. And then instead of, you don't really need the vit, uh, you'd either go like cooldown reduction or resource cost reduction on those. Uh, for your belt, actually I'm not gonna do belt yet. Um, actually, uh, I'll do it after cinder coat. Then cinder coat, this is another item. Basically, fire damage increase, that's why you're using it. Then you just want your dex, your vit. And then if you notice like something weird on here, I have like, there's like something like extra stats. Where do these extra stats come from? This is like a brand new recipe in your Kanaya cube. And what you basically do is you take a leveled up legendary gem. You, so this is like the required rank for each item. I mean, like a level 30 legendary gem for your weapon, 50 for armor, 40 for your ring. And then base like on the main attribute that you want to apply to your gear, you'll put in like the, the desired uh, gem. So if I want like dex, I'll put like three emeralds in. And then basically you just sacrifice your gem and then you permanently add stats. It's like five main attribute per gem level. And you do that to every single piece of your gear, like 13 pieces of the gear. Um, so that's what I did there. I sacrificed a little, little 54 gem on that. And so anyways, you're using Syndicote and it was looking for the fire resource cost reduction. We're using fire skills to just spam wave of light a bunch. And then the big thing with this build um, is your gold wrap. So with gold wrap, it's gonna pretty much give you infinite toughness every single time you pick up gold, and you're proccing that a bunch by Bo or Boon of the Hoarder, which is a legendary gem, a max at level 50, and then like 100% chance, every single time you kill an enemy, you cause an explosion of gold. And another nice thing, it gives you movement speed, so you're gonna be more efficient. Uh, Bane of the Trap, just for the damage multiplier, and then your Pinto's Pride will proc it, but as you'll see, there is so much overkill damage, um, it doesn't really even matter. And then even after L01 gets, uh, you know, uh, the damage gets bumped down when they fix it or like do the next iteration, you're still gonna be doing the same exact thing. You're still gonna be one-shotting everything on Torment X. And then for your amulet, um, 
uh, or for your ammo slot, I use a Hellfire. This for an extra passive, I have like near-death experience. I probably wouldn't have that on there, but I don't have another ancient one. And the biggest thing when utilizing uh, these rings, you need every single item to be ancient. It doesn't really matter the stats. Like the, the apex of these uh, rings, uh, the stats are negated by the multiplier. So you just want to make sure everything's ancient, like every single slot ancient. That, that's, the, that's your number one requirement, um, or that's your number one goal. So then I just got like this Hellfire with crit chance, crit damage, and dex. Now going here, can I cube um, incense torch of the Grand Temple? Basically, spirit cost wave of lights reduced by 50%. You just spam your wave of light. Now this is where uh, I like. There is some deviations here. So I prefer Nemesis bracers, and the reason why I prefer Nemesis bracers in my cube is so every single time you go to a shrine and pylon, you don't have to open up your inventory and swap. However, if you want more cooldown reduction to have like uh, to hit that requirement for your blinding flash like uptime, you just throw in a Leorx crown. If you don't want to leave your crown and you want to use a fire walk, like I showed you before, like where like the little fire trail will kill the enemies on the ground, you just slap in fire walkers. And then for your last slot, uh, I like using the average band. And what do you see when I do the gameplay footage uh, coming up here in a second? Basically, whenever you proc the boon of the hoarder, a bunch of gold will come out. When you when the, when the gold comes out and you pick it up, you get this huge pickup radius. So it's a pickup radius plus 30 yards. And pretty much everything that drops on the ground will be sucked into your character. Gold, uh, the progress orb from elites. Unfortunately, there's not a, no auto pickup of item or crafting mats yet. But those two big things, they'll make your uh, rifts go a lot more efficiently. And then you know, there's nothing really else you can swap to. I guess like convention elements if you really want. And then if you guys don't want to be using uh, the, the Boon of the Hoarder setup, which I uh, hopefully you guys are going to use, it makes your life so much easier because you're going to have infinite toughness and you're never going to have to worry about dying. Um, but if you don't want to use that, you could use like a Witching Hour, and then you could use the Zade's Waitstone in place of the Boon of Hoarder, and then I'd just go with like convention elements, like I said before. So, anyways, let's open up this rift and let's see some gameplay. And oh, and if you're running solo, use a Templar. The biggest thing is just like the 1.1 multiplier on your Sphere Regen, and then you just have like the token where your follower can't die, Thunder Fury, S. E. Johan, just like some Ancient Shield. I have a Unity on there right now. I don't know why, because I'm not using Unity, but it's there. And like, I got a bull cap, those sweating band. Um, but like, if you're doing solos, you like you in your cube. But anyways, oh man, we got the lovely cave maps. But anyways, you just want to like try to find the leads uh, to proc your ingems. Like right now, um, you know, we just killed like a couple white mobs, and look at our toughness. We have like two billion toughness already. Like we have zero chance of dying and this is where i come in or what i said earlier you could like remove harmony uh basically as soon as you kill like the first mob you don't have to worry about dying oh there's like your first elite uh there's a nice thing about death's breaths death's breaths were changed in this patch they're now teal so you're actually going to be able to see them and pick them up and here's a nice thing about nemesis bracers like boom nemesis bracers they don't have to swap so that's a nice quality of light chain probably like the nicest one I'm actually gonna like pick up items and stuff like I'm normally farming. I don't know who actually farms, it just runs past all the good stuff. I just ran past the good stuff. And that's pretty much it. So like notice my spirit, my spirit's perfectly fine because all my RCR. Uh, and then what you could actually do for your blinding flash here is you could go into your options, you go to your keybinds, and I have my blinding flash on E. Um, which is like key three, right? So I'll just like bind that to numpad five. And then you could press numpad five down, and then you could take off your numlock, and then every single time that comes off cooldown, it'll auto cast for you. And I'll put the auto cast guide in the info section also. So notice like I don't even have to press E anymore. And this is like a totally legit way to do this. It's not against terms of service. Like, as soon as it comes off cooldown, my blinding flash is pressed. And you can do that actually for all your skills. Like, let's say you don't want to, like, micromanage Epiphany. You do the numlock trick with your Epiphany. You can do it with your blinding flash. You can do it with everything. I want these DBs. I hate this dungeon. It's always so tricky. It looks so cool, though. Probably aesthetically one of my, like, my favorite dungeons out there. Now we got like a Rift Guardian. And then just one shot, Swifty Macro. 
pretty much it. I'm gonna do like another dungeon, but we're gonna like we're gonna go full speed instead of like explaining stuff. I wish I would have saw my toughness by the end of the dungeon. One more. Oh, we have to wait for the timer. Alright, let's see what we end up getting. And the reason why we're getting like so many legendary drops right now is because of PTR. There's a community buff where it's like 20 time drop rates, so don't think this is going to be on live. They have no intentions of putting these drop rates on live. They'll be absolutely, it'll be absolutely crazy. But anyways, it's just for PTR testing and stuff like that. Okay, so let's go. Let's go max speed now. It'll be cool if we get like an outdoors map too. Oh, this, this is actually like one of the new maps. It's an, out, an outdoor map, but uh... And notice like, uh, be they're picking up gold, we have like this insane pickup radius. So everything that we kill the elites, all the progress orbs, everything gets sucked up. And that just makes all of our runs a lot more efficient. Those orbs actually give like an insane amount of greater rift progress. This map is kind of weird. Because it's like, it's uh, not very linear, so you have to like search around for a lot of things. I think on the drama in jumps buff I did, because we didn't get like an elite pack. So much pickup radius. So like right now we have 32 billion toughness. So like I get stand in like all these molten's and I'll never die. And that's because the average band gold wrap combination. And then also the pickup radius is nice also. But anyways, that is it. Um, if you guys have any questions about the build, uh, you can ask them down below in the info section. Uh, if you want to not ask them down below in the info section, you can catch me live at twitch.tv down mods. But anyways, uh, thank you guys for checking out the video and uh, happy hunting in season five. Peace out.